Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Let's get to the business of tonight. The training may be hard today, but you will thank me tomorrow. Believe me. This is it's not it's not a way that has just been discovered. It's always been there. But the road has been narrow because very few people care to follow it. See, I'm telling you, listen to what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what level you are now. It doesn't matter what is wrong. Just pay attention to God. Give him time and see what he will make out of your life. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm teaching really more as a life coach, if I would put it that way. I want to talk to us about our lives and our destinies, and I want to challenge us. The focus of my communication tonight is to help us embrace transitions, but then um, my talk is to everybody, but my challenge mostly is to the men this night because you must be successful this year. Say amen. amen. So before we start, all the gentlemen rise. Aside from our elders, probably sit down. But every gentleman rise. Don't laugh. Rise. We are not playing games, please. The teaching has started. If you are not sure what you are, stand up. Hallelujah. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I will be successful. Regardless of where I am now, regardless of what I do not know now, I make up my mind that my world will celebrate me. I refuse to fail. It's a decision that I've made. I refuse to fail. I declare that my family my sphere of influence and God will be proud of me God bless you please sit down 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 please everybody write especially the men whether you are standing even if you are sitting on a tree get a piece of paper this night and write you know I've told us when you come especially for those of us who are new please Get a good notebook or something. Um, make sure you are writing. One of the things that we have to come to terms with in life is the dynamic nature of life. Please listen carefully. Pay attention. The dynamic nature of life. Life 
is in phases and at certain periods in our lives we are compelled to experience what we call transitions everybody say transitions um, in, in biology or primary science they teach about what we call the life cycle of insects right it starts from what egg larva some of you got zero you still will get zero today after many years from egg some of you are saying adult how can it be that hmm? and so we see that there are what transitions and at every stage the rule is different hallelujah at every stage now for us humans there are phases of transitions you start from a, a baby when you are born down to that early stage of childhood right and then you get into teenage and from teenage people say young adult I've, I've told you my position in those things i don't believe an adult is anybody who is not a child whether you are young or old is irrelevant adults and from adults it continues like that and at the end of your life you can now look back and see whether you spent your life impacting people or being a liability to humanity so one of the challenges watch this and i truly thank god for giving me this paradigm as a person and giving us the opportunity to communicate this as a ministry what i call a balanced growth my obsession has always been to bring balance to the body of christ right i attack violently any trace of imbalance in the body of christ maybe it's because of the apostolic office but i hate an exaggeration of truth and one dimension of life above and beyond the other right so i don't want to raise people who are spiritual tongue-talking people but are broke failures in life and on the other hand i don't want to raise people who will build houses be mighty people and go to hellfire are you getting me i don't want a situation where all the brothers are praying in tongues but every time when you are going to somebody's house to get married the father looks at you and says young man what is your name say my name is, is christian say uh huh what, what what difference does that make what are you here for he say i saw a flower i say you a flower where you know but there are essentials that if we do not address you see part of the spirit of leadership not just being a man of god leadership is to discern transitions and to bring relevant teachings that build people strategically according to the seasons of their lives are you following me now if i go to a congregation where i'm talking to professionals there is my approach my examples right and my communications become different if i'm teaching in a children's class you can't sit down in a children's class and tell them about relationships and marriage and the rest you are, you are spoiling those children you're supposed to be teaching them how to press into god you know all of that and you cannot be talking to um say grand people of 70 80 years and you are talking to them and you know saying certain things so part of leadership and and this is the entire scope of what we call in theology homiletics not just the art of teaching but the ability to communicate right we live in a generation where you must make sure that the questions you are trying to answer have been asked there are many preachers who are asked who are answering questions nobody is asking so while it is true that we must remain aligned with what the spirit is doing we must also be able to transit the body of christ the church is an institution right an institution is a platform that is able to mold people's mindsets and ideologies and part of the job of preachers is to be able to help the body of christ become successful and relevant even societally i was saying it in the leaders meeting and i said look my project this year among other things is to trust god that as this rain falls rain cannot fall on a land and you don't see anything growing with time is that true so that rain will fall on us in the name of jesus but then just just prophesying and saying the name of jesus be successful is a mirage you've done it for years nothing happened success is not an impartation there is nowhere in the bible where you impart success 
you can you can receive impartation of wisdom you can impart all of this but the bible says they are life to those who find them not to those who wish praise the lord are we there 13 verse 11 not 1 11 when i was a child that means when i was at a season of my life called childhood are you following me now certain things happen in my life at that point number one i did what my conversations were childish i spoke like a child and and nobody you don't rebuke a child if we call one of these our little ones now and comes up and we say say something and he says i want sweet you can't flog him he's speaking as a child that is the reality within his age range and it helps us know that the child is correct if you call a little child and looks at you and says where is my wife automatically you know he has been watching nonsense either house helps or people have have have, have raped his mind and transited him to realms that is not supposed to have gotten there are you getting what i'm saying now so there are seasons i speak like a child so you know a child first by conversation second i understood mindset i had the mentality of a child my understanding was childish some group of um, some of my little children in this place they always come to hug me after service so they wrote me a letter they all came together wrote different letters and gave me and I made a mistake and I carried my big mouth and I said I was going to reply the letter and these children will not let me rest so today I decided to reply the letter and give them after the service if you write me a letter and I don't reply it you, you as an adult you can't come and pin me I tell you look my brother the reality but these ones don't care they wrote you a letter and they don't care whether you are traveling to the world and back if we tell them now next week all of you come here you are going to we are carrying you to where a place where we we'll go and play or even father christmas or father february or father whatever is coming here they will come dressed and happy they don't want to know where you get the money from they don't care the cost dimension of life does not apply to them they don't think cost they only think reality you told me you will buy me sweet whether you are stealing the money whether the shop is open or not where is my sweet you said you are buying me a car where is it even if he doesn't have food to eat at that point he believes that a car is coming so i understood like a child right number three i thought like a child so those things are they characterize certain seasons but then the trouble with many people and especially young people is that we do not realize that life does not remain at the same plane whether you are prepared or not sooner or later transitions begin in our lives right i'll never forget going somewhere and i saw a place that i used to go many years ago i used to just go there and joke around and play and i said jesus christ who would have known that that little boy playing around you see that see the guys see some of you touching your face and saying this is beard am i joking when did he welcome to transition i remember i remember when i was when i was in secondary school i think it was just one or two they were these zealous guys that really wanted to start having mustache. They were so they were excited about it. We had some people who were very hairy and then all of that. But then these guys, it looked like an insult. And you see them sit down and everybody trying to make his voice deep. How are you? And all of that. And now <laughs> you still see people do it, Abby. All these boys, when they say how far, they just try to make sure that they, they want to force themselves into certain seasons. But then you get to those seasons and you are tired and you wish. There are times that you go to Bab and you say, make sure it's um, a nice barbie in this. And make sure it's the type that will attract the ladies. But now, when you go, you say, are you there? As they are barbie, they say, what? Just, just keep lowering it. You don't even know what. You don't know what the name of the style you want. Just say, start. 
start whatever it looks like as you proceed i'll tell you whatever adjustments you make some of you even finish barbing and they say calf, say calf what difference does it make carving transitions are you following me now now whether you like it or not you will come to the end of a phase in your life and demand will be placed to transit to another dimension are you getting what i'm saying this is very very important our inability to understand the laws of transition and the demands that we need to make will produce failures you can succeed at a season in your life and transit and start failing at once for instance you can succeed as a child saying foolish things and going scot-free and then when you transit and forget you have grown what you said yesterday and people kept quiet you say it tomorrow and they will slap you is that true because a transition has happened a mistake you made and god kept quiet as if he didn't see it you make it two years later you will pay for it dearly so our ability to understand transitions and the demands they bring is what i want to share very briefly there are five areas that we must focus on to be called successful in our lives never forget these five areas number one is your spiritual life the first area you must focus your spiritual life talks about your relationship with jesus christ your relationship with jesus christ your passion about the things of god your passion about the house of god your passion about spiritual activities your 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 passion to know god and love him more a season comes in your life where if you don't pay attention to your spiritual life it will start messing up your life now look at me our generation of young people we thank god for what god is doing right now but most of our parents did not focus on spiritual growth what they focused on was academic or intellectual success is that true so if i have a master's today even if i'm drinking beer i'm okay right so if i come and meet this lady come i meet her and i say i want to marry you and they say how is the guy so he's nice is he walking yes where he's walking with uh, civil defense I say, wow, this is okay. He's nice, went to school, this and that. He drinks, but eh, just touches it once in a while. And so, once, listen, that does not look like an issue. Every other thing was a very serious issue. Does he drink? Eh, once in a while, smoking. I only saw him smoke once. Ah, but it's okay now. It's better than how many people. And then, we are very happy. That person is called successful because he seems to have something doing. But I'm showing you, sit down, bless you, my dear that you must focus on spiritual success is is a non-negotiable index to measure success and growth your relationship with jesus christ your understanding of spiritual things i will never never in my life give my daughter to anybody who is not born again and filled with the holy spirit and serious with god with traceable evidences of transformation traceable traceable you, you not you can't you can't say you love god and then we can't see the sign god is not a god is not a herbalist you love god you've worked with him there must be a traceable evidence number two finance everybody say finance all the men say finance areas that you must focus on in your life if you mean business with success i don't care how you pray in tongues pray to the roof and come down if you do not pay attention to your finance it may not show now but as transition happens you will see the gravity of your not paying attention to it are you getting what i'm saying wealth finance defines wealth abundance financial freedom very important I was talking to the leaders and I said, Kai, we need to do something about our brothers. Many of them love God, but they are broke. 
is not an insult. If we don't do that, other people will come and be carrying our ladies. Because when it's time to marry, God has said, move forward. There is a Red Sea in front of you. Right? The Red Sea. Is, and that Red Sea now is, is, is not Red Sea of demons. You have settled those ones. You left Egypt already. You left Egypt flawlessly. But right now you are standing before a Red Sea. Praise the Lord. If you don't pay attention to your finances, you will be a failure in life. And I tell you this, I give it to you as a guarantee. Number three, family life. Many people learn family life as they get married. When things go wrong, he looks at the wife and says, what's going on? So what's going on? We are messing up. Say, really, what did you learn about family? Say, I didn't learn anything. I only got married. And unfortunately, the institutions that are supposed to build and equip people in this area are failing. Either as a result of negligence. I told you that the church is a school. The church is also an institution. Praise the Lord. There are many people who are getting married. They don't even know what they are doing. They don't understand the implication. Is that true? I was talking to some gentlemen and I said, guys, when do you want to get married? All of them said various dates and all of that. And I said, convince me that your home will not be a disaster. They made a lot of very intelligent statements. Okay, Jesus, they've handed over, the, or they'll hand over the family to Jesus Christ, which is good, right? Which is good, but not all. Okay, they'll do something, get a job, good, but not all. Number three, don't forget that in family life, you are not living with animals. You are living with human beings who have a will. How many of you have roommates that you were praying that last session should end? Christians, you love God. You were so happy when you finished the last exam. The roommate said, I'm finally going. Say, I'm, I'm, I wish you a Merry Christmas. You've started wishing Christmas from 2nd of December. I wish you a Merry Christmas. In other words, get out of my room and my life. All of them. All the doors. Just leave. So if you do not understand the principles of human relations, what convinces you that because you saw a beautiful girl or a beauty or a handsome guy? I like the guy. What of you? What do you think? Ah, whether you like the lady or you like the guy, sooner or later, see, during relationship, a lot happens because it's just two of you. When you get married, relatives come in. Born again or not born again. Are you seeing now? Transition. So many other factors that you are not aware of come in. You get married to the man and all of a sudden, the man is yawning and pouring saliva. And you are saying, my Jesus Christ, my Prince Charming. I turned down 30 guys for this gentleman and what is this? The first shocker. Welcome to the reality of transitions. You may not have the opportunity to see that. Right? So, the, the trouble is not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with your success at this level. Because you have mastered the level. But when you transit, you will not use the old formula for the new level. Are you getting me? So, I want to share with you that you must know how to transit with life otherwise you will be shocked as a pastor the way you pastor a church of 12 members 14 members is very different when 50 members come out of those 50 there's at least four or five wicked people they are they've been your 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 leadership style must be able to accommodate the mixed multitude that is coming that means the way you do ministry for 12 people, I love them, I trust them, they are all, they will die for me. 50 people will not die for you, I guarantee you. Right? When 100 people come, your leadership style and your understanding must change. When a crowd comes, everything must change. Same thing. When you get a job, as a JJC, they just gave you a job, there is an approach. The moment they promote you, certain things are expected. Right? As a senior staff, there are some things you do that your corporation or whatever will not be able to take from you. Are you getting what I'm saying? When God began to transit Moses in the anointing, 
it was simple disobedience of striking a rock instead of speaking to it that stopped Moses from entering the promised land. To you, it may look like that, is, that was too hard a punishment, but compared to what standard? Are you getting me? Was it not Aaron and Miriam that said certain things and they were punished severely? Look at Zechariah, right? Zechariah said uh, this and that and that. He insulted Gabriel and they shut his mouth. The same Mary asked questions. How shall these things be? And the angel, they rebuke her. He took time to explain because he was dealing with people at two different levels. Are you following what I'm saying? Family life. You can make or ruin the future of yourself and the people God will bring under your care if you do not understand the principles of family life. Number four, very quickly, your career or your professional life, you must pay attention to it or generally speaking, your assignment. You can pray in tongues. You can have a good home. If you're a liability in your workplace, you're a liability in your office, you're a liability in your corporation, they will check you out no matter what kind of tongues you are praying. Are you getting my point? So you must focus on the area of your career, the area of your professional life. Praise the Lord. And then your assignment, generally speaking. And the last area is the area of relationships and associations. Five areas you must pay attention as you transit even in this season. What's number one? What's number two? What's number three? What's number four? Number five. Listen, if you pay attention to all these areas and you succeed in them, you will become a balanced person. Anointed, wealthy, right? Blessed with the gift of associations, you can impact people, you can leave a legacy. This is what God wants for us. And my job is to help us. I don't want an imbalance where we are anointed, we are casting out devils, but then we are tied down financially. Or we are succeeding financially, but we are on our way to hell. Right? Or our families and marriages are failing. Listen, any pastor any man of God that does not pay attention to these areas will have a chaos in his family. That's why God can never trust certain ministries with certain levels of people. Because we must sustain the ability to balance it. What good is it? Listen to me. If stand up Zoe and Ken. Assuming both of them are husband and wife. Huh? Husband, wife. How will you love a crowd of tongue-talking people who taught themselves in the morning at home? Wife comes wearing glasses because the man really injured her eyes that morning. And they came and you are full of all kinds of people. And you believe that you are rising but there's all kinds of fight happening everywhere. And you say, turn to your neighbor and you find out that people are not turning to their wives. They are turning to some other people. Right? A husband comes, he sits in front, his wife is down there, the children are somewhere there. They form a triangle in the church because they don't want to see any, they don't want to even come near themselves. You are a failed leader when that happens. Bless you, please sit down. Now, for some of us, like I said, some of the things that I'm teaching may not seem to make all the sense for us. Why? Because of the level that we are in life. I will be touching on some things that will challenge you. But the shock is that transitions are instant. That means you must prepare for a phase before you get there. You don't prepare when you get there because transitions are instant. One moment you write your final exam and you wake up to find out you're a graduate. Whether you believe it or not, you are. You dance and rejoice, but then a transition has occurred. Praise the Lord. You'll be arguing, I want to marry Oh God, my husband must come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I smoke him out of everywhere he is. He must come to me. All kinds of prayers, we apply different skills to, to force breakthroughs into our lives. Now the man comes and before you know it, you have become a wife. And you check and find out that it's six months. You are tired of cooking. Oh God, what is this? You did not brace up for the transition. You were more excited about the motions. 
You were more excited about living singleness than being a wife. You were more excited about wearing a ring than sustaining a good family. Two months into your wedding, you are tired. That's why you see people slap one another and they are tired. Are you doing no? Are you doing no? Well, let's go. There must be an understanding. And then, there are many Christians, and some of you who work, and I'm, I'm sure our daddy prof here will testify, and many other people. Many Christians fail, fail in their professional lives. Is that true? They are the ones they downsize. They are the ones they sack. They are the ones who are ineffective. They are the ones who are always doing the wrong things. You give them a paper to present, they make a, a, a mess of it because they don't prepare. They are waiting for the Holy Ghost to prepare the paper and they come up, she get da, da, da. is it your turn? Yes. And they come and make a mess of nonsense. And then we get angry. One of the worst problems of Africa is the belief that our problems are entirely demonic. It's one of the worst things that has happened to the continent of Africa. An easy explanation to failure. Praise the Lord. So your boss looks at you and queries you. And he said, while he was talking, I saw a spirit behind him. As if what he was saying was a lie. You have been ineffective. They now call you in a board meeting and say, Mr. Man, we have all seen what you have done. We want to promote you, but it doesn't look like you have been effective. Praise the Lord. Very important. How many Christians have given God an opportunity to bless them and increase them? How many Christians are CEOs of multi-million and multi-billion dollar corporations? Very few. Because many Christians embrace an average life and we are happy about it. It's God speaking to us. And we keep talking and say they made an unbeliever the CEO. You will stand side by side with that person and you will not be able to deliver in, in even if the standards were lowered. Praise the Lord. Am I challenging us? How many Christian students pass WAEC? Let's be very sincere. How many Christian students pass JAM? People play around and then two days to the exam, they are just smiling around. How many Christian young people get employed one or two years after graduation? Because the biggest problem with Africa is the transfer of blames to demons. You can't sue demons to court. You can't summon them before a judge. So, we, we do not concentrate on our assignments and on our, on our professional lives. How many men of God are able to deliver? They call and say, Lord, bring a crowd. They, they understand nothing about leadership principles. They think all there is is the ability to lay hands. No, sir. No, sir. Organizational skills, zero. Leadership skills, zero. Communication skills, zero. Right? Crisis management skills, zero. And now you want God to give you a crowd. You want to go on air. Is God speaking to us? And then our relationships and associations. People skills. If you fail in these five areas in life, then you are truly a failure. I don't care whether you got first class in school. If your spiritual life is dead and all other areas are dead, I guarantee you life will whip you in a way that you will be shocked. And I want us to be successful. Status is changing. It's no more decline. You're on your way to better death. It's not magical. It's a process. Status is changing. It's no more decline. On my way to Please write very quickly. Why many people are failures or mediocres in life? Write. Why? The reasons. Reasons why many people, especially young people, end up being failures and mediocres in life. There is a reason. There is a reason why many people end up being failures. They go to school, they give their best, they graduate, they do everything and then they step out of life with a lot of expectancy. 
Just like there are some of us seated here right now. We are angry at life because what they told you is not what you are seeing. I don't have a job. There's nothing happening. Every lady I go to, I want to marry you. She says, I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Why are you sorry? Am I dead? Am I not alive? He said, you are living, but it's like you are dead. Number one, and this is where I want to get our attention now. Gentlemen, pay attention. No pinching around. Be very serious. Number one is mindsets. The first reason why people become failures or mediocres in life is their mindset. Everybody say mindset. Lack of mental transition. Lack of mental transition. They are growing older, but their minds are not transiting with the new seasons. To understand the demands, the responsibilities, lack of mental transition. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11 said, When I was a child, spoke like a child, understood like a child, and he said, I thought like a child. But then he said something. He said, now that I am a man, what happened? He said, I lay aside. I throw away childish things. So many of us have become men and women, but we have still embraced the mindset that you had when you were 11 years old. Is that true? So although you are married, you are finding out that you are a big child. There is a lot of childishness happening. In your office, you are seeing childishness. That inability to transit mentally. To match the transition that is happening in your life. Mindset. And there are three aspects we'll deal with under mindset. Number one is dependency mentality. Dependency mentality. Oh, God is speaking to us. If you pay attention to what I'm saying, the rain will fall on you truly. Dependency mentality. Everyone say it. One more time. Dependency mentality because although it is scriptural, can I have one gentleman? Come, my brother. If this guy is my son, watch this. If this guy is my son, I have a scriptural injunction, right? As a father to take care of him. Is that true? To take care of him, to make sure that he eats well, make sure he loves God and all the responsibilities. But as the transition begins to occur in his life, this child is now becoming an adult. Is that true? That means that there must be a transition. But by the time this gentleman is 30 years, 25 years, and he's still having a dependency mentality. That's why we have so many men. They are married, but their mothers and fathers tell them everything to do. Because they, the transition happened, but in their minds, they didn't transit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mommy, what do I cook for him today? He said, what did you cook yesterday? He said, say, Mom. say oh yeah, try Gary today. See that? So, that inability to stand to an extent, brothers and sisters, there are many people who get married and they create a room for them in their parents' house. I'm not talking of a large compound with many houses because the man cannot do anything. Mommy prepares a room for him. He now carries his wife. Later on, the wife is pregnant. She gives birth. And they are all here. It's a terrible thing. It's a cause. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, dependency mentality. They were giving you pocket money. Maybe 5,000, 10,000 per month. And now you graduate. And five years after graduation, you start frowning at your father. He doesn't understand why the bad look has happened. Because... He expected that you would have realized. They gave you scholarship. You were blowing it. Buying books. Buying, uh, buying boots. Buying trainers. Buying everything. After all, my father, he gave birth to me. Right? And now you are finished and your father says, um, I think you should be considering moving. Say, moving to where? Is it not you who is supposed to build a house for me? The Bible says this and that and that and that. Shame on many young people because although they are old, we are quick to look for women but very slow to transit. You see a lady, ah, I like this lady. And where are you? What are your plans? That transition, dependency mentality. 
Hallelujah. To an extent that you see a young man. Some of you are looking at me as I'm talking to you now. You are in this category. You are seated and you get up shamefully. Very shamefully. And you call your old parents from their pension. And you say, Popsy, yeah. Can you transfer something to me? And he says, okay, things are not going on. I says, it's always like that. You're always, and you caught the call, and you are raking, and your mediocre friends are massaging. He said, calm down. Please calm down. Calm down. You know old people with this, their thing. And your mother is crying on phone at home and say, my son, it's not like I don't love you. What is all that? Eh? It's not even this and that and that and that. I beg Jare, send me some money. And then they go and borrow money. And as old as you are, they send money. You use 10,000 to buy cake and celebrate 30 years. And it doesn't occur to you that there is a transition. Is God speaking to us tonight? Oh, you must grow in the name of Jesus Christ. You may not like me now, but I will come to your homes and you will thank me for it. See, let me tell you. The person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth. It may challenge you, but it will make you a better person. Some of us, we have this over-dependence on everybody. Your father's first responsibility to, is to his wife, not you. To his wife, not you. Hallelujah. To an extent that there are many people who are, I know people who are working but still want their parents to give them money. They are working, collecting salary, 100,000. They collect the salary and keep and say, Mommy, how far? Dependency mentality. You become a parasite to everybody. There are people who, everywhere you go, when they see you, you are tired. You call people, they say, well, he's not around. And he's the person you are looking for who is talking. He picks the phone and says, please, John is not around. He said, ah, are you not John? He said, he's not around. He calls the call because there is a parasite mentality. Right? As a young man, you don't learn, you don't want to learn how to cook and you don't want to be rich. A paradox. You want to go to the restaurant every time and then you want to remain broke. If there's nothing there, learn how to cook. If you can't cook anything, learn rice, beans, swallow. It's a good start. It's a good start. Is God speaking to us, please? Take what I'm saying very seriously. Because if you don't, sooner or later, you will see that it will whip you seriously. I counsel a lot of people. And when couples come, their number one problem is the inability. As I hear them speak, I still see children speaking. Because there is that, it has happened in church. But mentally, there is that dependency mentality. So the man looks at his wife and says, Mommy. She looks at the husband and says, Daddy. And then there is a mommy-daddy fight going on. Because everybody is depending on who. Why didn't you wake me? I need to be at the office by 7.30. Why didn't you wake me? Oh, guy, you are married. Your mother woke you when you were going to jail. one, five o'clock. That old woman will get up and put water for you and do everything and iron your clothes. You are married. To an extent that some of us are pests to our roommates, office mates. You never cook. You don't ever say anything about cooking. Bros, you don't do. Just step into people's rooms. And when they see you coming, they say, lock the door. Lock the door. This parasite is coming. Your life is not supposed to be that way. Hey, hey, look, hold on, please. I hope as we are laughing, we are listening. Your life is not supposed to be like that. A parasitic life. Everybody runs away from you. Because you have a dependency mentality. You never have the opportunity to manage situations. You have headache. You are running around expecting everybody to say, you, you see that, and, and the ugly part is when it happens for men. It makes, it's okay if it happens for women. But a matured man and another matured man, oh boy, sorry, oh, you have headache. What is that? Praise the Lord. The guy is not feeling fine. Who should tell you to get up and go to a clinic? It's not like there's no money. We are used to dependency mentality. 
mommy where are you come and take me to the hospital you are 30 years dependency mentality so that's what happens when that kind of man gets married his children can be sick and he will look at them like that because he's not used to taking responsibilities dependency no food at home eh? so what no food that's it now they sack a man from work 10 years later he has not gotten another job and he doesn't care he said what happened you know the way nigeria railway corporation that time we we're working railway i was working in nitel i was working in this and he's qualified the cvs are there ah, you hear me this night bless you please mindsets dependency mentality you must get out of it do make up your mind not to be a pest and a parasite to anybody say i am a blessing not a parasite say it i am a blessing not a parasite when you were small when you visit your uncle once you are going they they carry smarties and conflicts and milk and bon vita. Now you go and meet them. They are old and you see that. You say, Uncle, I'm going. No, he said, May the Lord bless you. I had you. You are a graduate. Now, where did you even serve? I served in Ondo. And immediately you finish. They say, ah, So they gave you all those 20,000 allowances. Yeah, those things they gave us. And now you finish and you are eyeing your uncle. You are angry because you are expecting him to gather everything and give you. See, I'm not blaming you. I'm challenging it out of you. It does not live by default. You force it to go out. That mentality will never live because you are growing older. I'm telling you, you must make a conscious effort. I made up my mind that the last money I will ever collect from my father was when I was in 100 level. And that was it. I took responsibility over my life. There's no job. Why? In Nigeria now, all this federal government is not true. It's not true. What effort have you made? Dependency mentality. So you see students practice this. You give them assignments, they never do it. Right? They are always waiting for a night to submission. Have you seen people like that? And then they come at me, they say, how far? You know, we are fellow koinonia people. So what? They now bring it, you copy that dependency mentality is the root of malpractice. Because you are in the exam hall and you never believe. Please, let's be sincere. How many WIAC results in Nigeria are genuine? That the people, I'm not condemning. Are you getting my point? How many? I, I never knew they used to do Expo in Jam, but now there's nothing that doesn't happen. All kinds of skills. Expo here, shoes, any kind. You, we have the mindset to be able to innovate ways of cheating. Something is wrong. Hallelujah. Dependency mentality. So, people pair themselves when they are going to write exams. Please come and sit down. If you don't know, I help you. If I don't know, you help me. Question one, you don't know. Two, you don't know. Three, you don't know. The bonus, you don't know. You don't know anything there because a dependency mentality. Hallelujah. There are many people who are angry with their parents right now. They may have failed in not being able to leave a possession for you. But let me tell you, if you sit down there, it's the same way your children will be angry with you. And say, did you have to marry? That's what your child will ask you one day. See, was it by force? Then you will flog him. Because that's exactly what happened to you when you asked that question. The second mentality under mindset is the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. The second mentality under mindset, we are still talking about one, let's hurry up, is the false comfort, false, F-A-L-S-E, the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. There are many people who become failures in life because they have found a way of generalizing failure. You know, the moment you generalize failure, have you seen people who fail and you ask them why? They say, ah, didn't you hear that there was mass failure? So they now exit themselves and say, no, it's not unique to me. 
Oh guy, you've been earning 200,000. After five years, you don't have a plot of land. Say, are you, are you, are you, you don't know what is happening in Nigeria? There is a mindset that spreads failure so that you nicely come out of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you've not paid the school fees of two of your children. You are a worker. You say, eh, you know now, the way this whole thing is, eh, is this just us? It's not happening in your office. We, we generalize there is a consolation that comes when you tell people, especially Nigerians, that you are not the only one who failed. Is that true? There are many people like that. So a man of God is falling sick recurrently. Instead of him to go back to the world and find out, why am I not eating? He says, look, uh, you see, we are humans. So you spread the failure and it excuses your unique wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is, is God speaking to us? So every time you fail, you look for somebody who failed just like you to derive comfort. Rather than settling down to say, no, no, I must have done something wrong. What did I do wrong? What steps can I make to fire back? Praise the Lord. That's the reason why we love witchcraft in Africa. Because it's a general thing. So when they come and say your whole family now nah, i'm not of course you know we pray next week is miracle service right there's a place to deal with that but let me tell you it's not everything in our lives that is tied to demons stop generalizing failure there is there is what you can know that will exempt you hallelujah say i refuse to generalize failure my bible says when men say there is a casting down what will be your testimony See, for as long as you find pleasure in generalizing failure, you will never be great. There are pastors who will never rise to the challenge for their ministry to experience another level. General failure. They say, you know, there's crisis in the north. Yes, it's true that there's crisis in the north. But are you not seeing God doing exploits in the midst of it? You see, when you generalize failure, it makes you comfortable because you are now saying that it's not anything wrong that I did. It's, it's, it's something that affected all of us. Are you getting what I'm saying? I learned early in life to take responsibility for my failures. Why didn't you come? Why did you come late to come and decorate this thing? Am I the only one? Did you meet any other person? We all came late. You see, that's it. That's the point. Praise the Lord. Ha, ha, all of you, your family are not married. Yes, we are all like that. You are now happy. In spite of the unique role you play, your role of carelessness and shouting at every man, that has nothing to do with deliverance. Your own lack of understanding of submission, you just rubbed it in the whole picture and said, we are, we, are, we are all, we are all, there's no marriage coming. It's like that. This is our family, sir. That's why you find out that after prayers, after healing, after deliverance, some people's situation never changes because the factor they've been trying to hide and generalize it is still there. The comfort that comes with generalizing failure. Number three, let me hurry up. The third mindset is an entitlement mentality. Similar to what we call dependency mentality. An entitlement mentality is, is for me, in my opinion, this is the most poisonous of all mentalities because entitlement mentality is the belief that someone owes you something in life. Someone owes you making your success happen. Someone owes you making your life. Are you getting my point? That, that mentality, the government owes me right my father is supposed to give me money i'm getting married my father should build a house for me buy a car it's my right that that entitlement mentality is a dangerous mentality the belief that someone else is responsible for your well-being the belief that somebody else is entirely responsible for your well-being. It's an entitlement mentality.
we blame parents for our failures we blame the government for our failures we blame a lot of external factors every time we are mentioning the things that make us fail we never talk about ourselves we never say our contribution to the equation hallelujah um, Elijah why did you slap Shay? I slapped her because she has been playing with my intelligence and this other guy who is supposed to talk didn't talk I'm watching you I'm coming for you you see we never say look I got this wrong I'm not in a good relationship right now I've entered 10 relationships nothing has worked probably there's something there is my outlook about life there is my perspective is ego stinging to come to a point where you accept but that is the point of true liberty are you getting what I'm saying I begged my father for car to go and greet her father with it my father refused my father only gave me the car wouldn't I be married by now an entitlement mentality I begged my father for jam money he refused to give me though I've not written the jam let me fail but I see if your destiny is in your father's hands please hear me koinonia I'm speaking to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you must quit that that entitlement mentality from today some of us have been sending insultive text messages to our loved ones insulting them and saying, I'm disappointed I asked you for 5,000 you cannot even send it mommy this is to let you know I respect you as my mother but I'm, I'm disappointed send you are cursing yourself people return back to their rooms and look at their roommates and they are frowning Una no cook. Ah. you didn't bring ingredients you didn't bring the food you didn't buy kerosene you didn't wash the plates but there is an entitlement mentality something in you lies to you that the whole world is just about you that's the entitlement mentality pastor Jake I beg I think get something from you he said no what for I'm hungry entitlement that's why you see in many churches there are all kinds of people who wait for people to share testimony oh god gave me three million and somebody's waiting for them immediately after the service say well done sir ah your testimony really touched me you see i hope there are no people who do that kind of thing here so you are a pest to everybody around you you are just waiting for people to succeed and then they pay you like it's a right your success depends entirely on you and God. Never forget that. It's God speaking to us. I knew this early in life and it has helped me. That belief that somebody will make you successful is devilish. Grow up tonight and get out of that mindset. Why are you not playing your keyboard very well? And nobody bought keyboard for me now. Who will buy it? Why have you not risen to that dimension? Why have you not started the business? Where will I get the capital? Everybody I meet is not giving me. Who was assigned to give you? You know, the entitlement mentality is an ugly mentality. It makes you believe everything in the world is all about you. You carry your problems and distribute it. You just come. Have you seen people like that? They come and meet you. The guy talking is wearing trainers of 11,000. He's wearing stock jeans of over 6,000. Dressing well and he's saying, um, I just came to meet you, Kai. Food stuff has finished. As if it's what is a, it's a surprise to you. Shouldn't it finish? Are you not using it? Food stuff has finished. And you say, um, so how can I help you now? Say, I need like, 30, 30 will do me. Look at, he's, he's seeking help from somebody and he's coming with a childish, right? Entitlement mentality. There are some of us who, and that's the danger. The danger there is when somebody starts helping you, it almost becomes like a right. Have you seen people that came to our homes or our families? They were trained, parents took care of them at a point that entitlement mentality started. Have you seen people like that? Terrible thing. 
you see a man and his wife maybe rain washed their house and they came to stay in your house for one month right very soon they start complaining i've been watching the way madam is putting food for her husband ah. what did you expect i noticed the way she puts food for my own husband you are squatting in somebody's house entitlement mentality my uncle gave me a job in this company how can i be in this company my uncle is there and i'm not one of the directors my uncle uncle solomon that grew up in our boys quarters i cooked for him so what so what you come late they put a circular in in your in your reception decks resume work by 6 30 you come by 10. you've done that for three years they didn't they didn't promote you your uncle has done everything to lift you and you are not cooperating yet entitlement mentality how many people have we hated innocently in life how many of our parents have we called witches and wizards because of entitlement mentality to an extent some of us can go somewhere and buy clothes and say they should go and meet your mother to collect the money or your father or your brother i refuse that mentality i refuse it i refuse it i refuse it in the name of jesus christ is god speaking to us some of these things i'm saying when it applies to you and it shoots at you like an arrow just let it enter you because it will it will refine you and it will make you as gold ladies and gentlemen let me announce to you again that transition is here embrace it whether you like it or not while i sat down i think it was um whether january or so miracle service and they were the celebrants if your birthday is january come out and i saw a lot of people smiling and i said transition transition praise the lord whether you are prepared or not transition is here praise the lord my my sister did something that touched me today in the afternoon while i was just meditating i got an email from my sister and she sent me i i still want to do it i've been trying to do that on my phone but it's i wanted to show all of you i wanted us to project it here our old six massacre 2009 crusade crusade photo i really would love us to have that i think we can walk i have it in my email eh? get me a laptop with internet and i'll transfer it yes i want you to see it one day we'll come up we have the video i think we have the video of our 2007 crusade you will see all of us there you see victor the head of department of protocol they all held firewood on their head hey oh that's what the song they were singing and jumping hey why you see us so lean looking like like whatever transitions but here we are today 10 years after now we will look back you will see the pictures of today and you will smile you will tell your daughter that was me say are you hearing that was me i was serving the lord all my life so don't think is this lie that most of our parents lied to us they said they were su president they were the best footballer in their school they were best everything our own has proof you can see it and you can know praise the lord one last mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality we're still talking about the reasons why people become failures and mediocres and I'm, i've just touched on number one media mentalities mindsets really mediocre mentality what is a mediocre mentality is the mindset that tells you impact influence is carnal it's a mindset that is satisfied with being small being quiet the mindset of an average life the belief the fallacy that an average life is the greatest way to make heaven is a mediocre mentality that mindset of being small have you had people like that me all i want god just give me one small golf one 
two house, anywhere, whether in the bush or wherever, I'm grateful. Let me just have my two children. If we can eat food in the morning, even if it's once a day, God be praised. It's a mediocre mentality. No matter how spiritual you try to make it. There are churches like that. We're happy. We're a simple, nice family church. We're happy. This guy has been there for the past 10 years. We're there. We're not doing anything. We're not letting anybody know what God. We're happy. We're okay like that. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. And they will break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Kingdom advancement. Kingdom advancement is tied to one word, influence. One word, influence. Without influence, there is no kingdom advancement. I want you to know that. When the church is quiet in a society, there is no influence and there is no advancement. The church in Nigeria is not quiet at all. That's why we are involved in everything in this country. The church, Nigeria is the most religious country in the whole world. And forget about the errors here and there. I tell you the church in Nigeria is alive. We have a say in everything from the executive government. Everybody knows in Nigeria that you don't downplay the church and go scot free influence I've studied revivals I've studied um, technological revivals it was all tied to the church are you getting what I'm saying we need men and women of influence get my teaching conquering cosmos there I teach on what we call strategic apostolic invasion it's not just sharing tracks influence what is wrong if koinonia has 10 bank managers as, as your members you imagine that we call that influence where one person represents a nation influence influence are you getting what i'm saying please don't ever reject influence in your life because god wants to give it to you it was through influence jesus was able to advance the kingdom the bible says it was noised abroad that that celebrity was in town and he had the opportunity to teach and to heal and to deliver it says in in matthew chapter 5 it says you are the salt of the earth you add value you give meaning to the earth you are not just a tongue talker it calls you the salt of the earth it calls you the light of the world and it says you are a city not like a city not a village you are a city Hallelujah. I refuse to be small in my life. Nobody will preach me into being small. I rejected it long ago. I still reject it. Koinonia will not be small. Souls are saved because of the influence. Destinies are changed because of the influence. During the retreat, media people told us the targets that they want on Facebook and the rest. And I told them, go for it. We are going all the way for it. Let me tell you, this is not a small ministry. We are visionary people and we refuse to be small. And you will never be part of this vision and be small. I will challenge you. I will challenge you. Thank God for where you are. But we will not allow you to remain there. You must rise. Because there is coming a renaissance. There will be an emergence of people in every area. Hallelujah. It was a mirage. In Nigeria, if one person owned a television station, is that true? Television station. I remember that time you own a television station, they tell you every kind of thing. And God said, come on, where are those apostles? And men and women started rising. 2005, the Lord revealed to me that there will be 37 Christian stations in Nigeria. And today, how many lives have been blessed through the power of the media? Are you getting what I'm saying? 
all the technological gurus and the rest imagine you making a, a laptop that the, it must not mention Jesus but imagine that you put it on and and the sound for it to start is a deep worship song whether you like it or not you must buy it hallelujah praise God you must make your presence known is the is the is is the principle of dominion part of dominion is to make your presence known in a territory then they will adopt your ideologies then they will embrace your convictions if there are if there are hundred millionaires i'm not talking of one million real millionaires in this place i guarantee you your spheres of influence will I, something happened I think um, I went one of our ladies here she's she's technically my account officer with one of the banks and um, and uh, we're going she had been forcing me to come and collect my card my card had expired and she was forcing me to come and collect the card she said I should get back into banking with them and all of that and then eventually I went she had prepared everything when I got there she was greeting me her superior was just looking at me who is this guy and before i know it i saw one koinonia member coming again and then one other lady coming to greet i said that's right this is the kind of testimony we want to be seen when they came and they were greeted ah the man squared up and said oh, well done sir i told him i said this this lady is the one who is forcing me to come to this bank look at her see that what does that mean promote her and lift her because she's doing a good job the influence of the kingdom i don't know who taught you that mediocrity brings glory to God I want you to know that the more you have results the more your words become powerful results add weight to your words results refuse a mediocre mentality refuse it hallelujah refuse it Pastor Jakes in his place of work within a short time when he was announcing his, his promotion and his lifting I smiled I said those guys those guys come on now physical competence the anointing wisdom grace everything combined you can't be small shout it I refuse to be small say it I refuse to be small please I'm challenging you thank God for the photocopying business but don't die there Start small, but I like you to see beyond. Who is God speaking to? I like you to see beyond. Refuse to be small. The influence of the kingdom is the key to strategic apostolic invasion. Michael Jackson is long dead, but last year alone, his album made 150 million US dollars. In fact, when he died, Three days after his death, they made $120 million at his death. The man who feeds you is the one you will listen to. Is that not true? For as long as the world system keeps feeding us, we will be forced to listen to them. But I tell you, there is an army. Ha! There's an army rising up this is why we are teaching these teachings there's an army rising up there's an army rising up they will break every chain break every chain break every chain break every chain Break every chain. Sing one more time. There's an army. There's an army rising. Things will not continue to be this way. I tell you. There's an army rising up. Break every chain. To break every chain. It is.
is not the will of God for you to be small. It does not glorify God in any way when you are small. John 15, I think from verse 8 when you read down, it says, Herein is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Much fruit, not little fruit. Much fruit. Much fruit. Look, I'm not talking of some carnal, fleshly wanting to make it in life. I'm talking of lifting with an assignment. Influence that is intentional as a means to an end. It makes your words powerful. You are able to speak. Hallelujah. That's why we must speak into your life. Oh, you will get the oil company job. That devil will not stop you. The, the, no, there are the principles. You will get it. You will be wealthy. You will be blessed. The devil will be alive to see it. I will never raise a poor congregation. Never raise a weak congregation. A weak congregation produces a weak man of God. A weak ministry that has no voice. I will never let anybody watch me on TV and scroll and say next. This useless man, part of the noisemakers. No. That when you listen, you say this is it. I had one word and it changed me. You must embrace the influence of the kingdom. I don't know what you have been taught, but you must change your mind. We have small parents, innocent but small, small families, small everything, small. I got my small degree, I read my thing, I don't even want anything. Let me just get, I got one teaching, one LEA school, I'm okay. 7,000 is enough. What am I looking for in this life? Stop that. Stop that kind of devilish thinking. Remember, let me always balance this. I'm not talking of this carnal, lustful affinity for the things of the world. I'm talking of gaining kingdom influence with the exact intention. Right? The exact intention to bring the glory and the kingdom of God. There was a time Jesus came in the city and he stole the show from all the scribes and Pharisees. The guys were angry. They said they are not listening to us again. Ah, uh -uh, what happened? Look, let me tell you, Koinonia, we are a city. We are a city. You are not a village. You are not small. I separate you from that small mindset. You may be in a small room now. Think big. You may be in a small hut now. No problem. Soak the gari, but see the world. There is much to do for the kingdom. God has increased and expanded our influence through the teachings and through the meetings that we've got. And we have seen more souls. Look at the gentleman. Where is that guy that came that shared his testimony? Oh, he's outside. Oh, look at that's the gentleman. All the way. We call it kingdom influence. How many people claim they saw Jesus and he said the words he gave them, he said they should take it out of the earth. But they are poor and broke. It has not come out. Not even everybody in the city knows. And it's not that they had a wrong encounter. Hallelujah. Influence. Influence. You must embrace it in the name of Jesus. Say, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Challenge yourself, I refuse to be small. The second reason why young people become failures my spirit is fired up. We are going to pray. The second reason. I told you the first is the mindset. Second reason is laziness. Laziness. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the match of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you. 
truly are. So laziness, everybody say laziness. The second reason why people become failures in life is laziness. There is this spirit of laziness that is upon many Nigerians, upon many young people, an inertia, a reluctance to move forward, inactivity, satisfied with their levels. Closely tied to laziness is the spirit of procrastination. I will do it another day. Oh, I will do it. Is it not savings? I will save the money. Is it? I will do it. I will do it. Procrastination is a dangerous spirit. Pray for your destiny. I will pray. Settle down. Begin to study in the unique area God has called you. Man of God, study about church growth. I will study one day until all your members leave. And then you start getting angry at everybody. All these people, are you sure they didn't touch their hand? Go and touch it too if it's available like that. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many lazy people in Nigeria. And the Bible talks a lot about laziness. The Bible talks about laziness. The moment you are lazy, get set to beg. You have signed an agreement with begging, no matter who you are. And I, I found something with lazy people hate begging. They hate begging. They feel embarrassed. Don't worry, just bring it, bring it, bring it. I'll do it fast. Lazy people hate begging. Hallelujah. Sorry for the little distraction. Let's pray. Pray in tongues while I do this. Is that alright? Alright, so go ahead and pray. Pray in tongues very quickly so that it will sink. It will sink down. Your word is producing results in my life. Sheba kapa para da bala da bos, embrotos kubredi gale bara da da bos, sekete para da 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 bos, raba ba kubredi gale bala da bos. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many of us who are lazy. Look at me. When it is time to sit down, you sit down. But if it is time to get up and act, huh? when there is an anointing for something, you stand up and act. There are many people that if you took action when God spoke to you, you would have built the house by now. There are many people, if you took action, you would have gotten that job action laziness i would do it no unfortunately time does not wait for everybody and if you want to wait until everything is right you will never move in your life the bible says he that considers the weather will never sow and as a result will never reap hallelujah laziness inaction procrastination that inertia refusal to move forward you are sitting in your room. Somebody just sows a thousand naira and the Lord says, get up and go to Jordan Bookstore. I gave you that money because there is a book I want you to buy. He said, no problem. 
you sit with that money immediately you see before you know it you have spent 200 naira from it see that before you know it you finish the money you just sit down there let me tell you one way the devil kills people sleep i know god gives sleep but satan can also give sleep sleep this sleep it looks little i was teaching the school of ministry students and i told them if you sleep eight hours a day when you are 30 years you've slept for how long you've slept for 10 years of your life exactly by the time you are 30 years just know that you are in reality 20 years because the whole 10 years went into sleeping you sleep from 8 o'clock you wake up round 1 waking is around 4 you just wake up and check if there's any Nigerian film around when there is none you lie down you wake up around 9 that's the second phase of, of the waking up it's not like you sleep marathon you wake up just browse around and then maybe you plug water for bathing and get back to sleep before you know it is 1 o'clock you just yawn and stand up and you sit down you are lazy as a sleep. you will be poor guaranteed Please, brothers and sisters, hear me. Love not sleep too much. It will rob you of the anointing. I, I don't know any man who carries true anointing who loves sleep. No. No, sir. No, sir. I've been awake today since at about, I think maybe 2.30 or 3. God is my witness. I've been awake. And as I go back now, it's not like I'm going to go and jump on my bed and start sleeping. No. What is your concept of success? Look, success is not cheap. It's not for children. T.D. Jakes wrote a book, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? It takes stamina to be distinguished. So for those of us who think the anointing comes and you just lie down and sleep and snore away your life and wake up and find yourself successful, you are joking. Wake up. Sleep. Huh? you lie down and sleep it brings a lot of things forgetfulness you are 30 years you forget about everything somebody says I'm coming he comes and he says why are you here he says, I said I'm coming he says, oh I remember he says, but you are too young for that unnecessary sleep when the night time when you should wake up and study and pray some of us people can be gisting they can even lie down your bed and wake up. You didn't know that anybody lay down there. Because you sleep and, and the sleep is so deep. You wake up and you are frowning. Ah, why did you wake me? It's a bad attitude. I know you won't like me. I will still say it. I love you too much to leave you that way. Especially for the gentlemen. Please love not sleep. If you find yourself sleeping around, just, just imagine money disappearing from your life one two anointing disappearing from your life wake up don't you know there is the mystery of the night time look at the prophets in the bible look at men look job said um, i mean the psalmist said in the night time during his time of meditation when things are revealed to him the night time is when great men get insights is the time where men of power travel in the spirit. Okay, it's, it's, it's true that you are tired. At least three, four or so. Wake up. Don't let your body cheat you. You need to drag it and say, no way. I refuse to let my flesh make me a failure in life. Who is God speaking to? There are certain people, even five o'clock waking up in the morning, that families used to do you know that thing they do five o'clock you wake up you carry your bible drop on your bed and sleep on it somebody will come and see you and think you are on, on that deep med who are you cheating who are you lying to when you see somebody please don't play that kind of expensive game with your destiny i'm not telling you not to sleep there are times i take out time to rest but brothers and sisters, if you must be great, there is a price. Please hear me, Koinonia. There is a price. Hallelujah. So laziness, we must walk on it. Laziness. Kill procrastination from your life. 
There are some things God has told you people to do. God told you to sow a seed. I will do it tomorrow. God told you to get up and read on leadership. I will do it tomorrow. Do it now. Do it immediately. Number three, fear. The reason why many people become failures and become mediocre in life. Fear. Fear. Fear of failure. Fear of being embarrassed. Not just failure, but fear of repeated failure. It's true that failure is embarrassing. It's true that failure is lashing, is ego stinging. But it is in your failure that you find the door to true victory. Please hear what I'm saying and take it seriously. Fear of being seen as a failure. Is that not what is responsible for our fake lives? Right? You go and borrow a shoe of 20,000 naira. And you go and say, this shoe, 20,000 naira. Is it your own? No. Because you don't want to fail. People borrow phones. I beg, I just want to stroll to Ribadu. Can you help me with your phone? What for? You borrow watch, borrow clothes, borrow phone, borrow everything, borrow mindset, borrow everything. And in the end of it, you find out that there is no authentic life. I've told us again and again in Koinonia, stop trying to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. Pay the price. That's why we don't discriminate anybody here. I don't want to know who you are or who your father is in terms of maybe preference and all of that. I treat everybody with honor and dignity because I believe everybody can be everything if you get the word. Hallelujah. Fear of failure. Look at me. Why didn't you start the business? Failure made you to give a lot of excuses. Why didn't you go and apply for the job? have not served do they take people who have not served did you go did you go you see ba look at me many of us write a lot of prayer requests next week now there will be another one i, I you know i kneel down to pray and i see it some of you is full scab you write it and then you write uh, please turn over that means it does not finish you there's still some more but the issue is that do you really believe that as the anointing comes on it you will need to take action you see why I've been teaching us on faith. Faith in one word is obedience. Action. I refuse fear. Is it because people will talk about you? Fail and see whether people won't talk about you. What you are running away from will come. Whether through the door of success or failure, it will still come. The greatest way to reply critics is massive success. Continue your results. Let the result keep speaking. You wrote jam. You didn't pass. So what? Why don't you write again? Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? Fear. Nigerians can fear. And many of us, that fear makes us to give ourselves excuses. I'm young. Please, there's time for everything. When is the time? I'm young. He told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. Don't say I'm a child. Say I'm a child. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, the the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. One of the top three wealthiest people in the world. He was asked a question that um, was the greatest mistake he made in his life, and he said he started investing at a um, very late. What is the late? Eight years old. Eight years old, Sila. Think about what I just said. There are people to start training and building their children, they say it's too small. Do you know there are some of you? If you talk to your parents about finances as you are now, they'll say, What are you what are you talking about it for? It's, it's an innocent mindset, but it's poisonous. So they tell you, Don't worry. Ah, why, why are you rushing? And then before you know it. You now have to face life by yourself and you make a lot of blunders. Say, I refuse fear. Say it, I refuse fear. There are two kinds of fear. Fear of trying and fear that comes as a result of the memory of your past failure. 
Some people have refused to get into relationships. The last one didn't work. Who said all would not work? You have made adjustments. I remember I went to minister somewhere and I gave a woman a word. I told her, I said, Madam, um, I see that something happened in your home, but I'm seeing you marrying again. No, ah! no please, oh, my children, it's okay. I said, ah, Madam, what's the issue? I'm just telling you what God is telling me. That a man is going to come, ask your hand in marriage, and you'll be gloriously said, say, me, marry a man, me, men. Look at my children, me, me. The woman was saying, I said, Madam, I'm a man. Oh, please, this one that you are talking about, men, as if it's not every man that, everybody, blah, 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 blah. The woman started crying. I said, Madam, God is bringing a good. Said, okay, well, you know how women talk. Okay, well, let's see. Fear. Fear. That's what has stopped some of us from being champion. You are used to failing. The day you succeeded and they told you you succeeded, it says a lie. Don't play games with me. Don't you know that the divine life, part of the blessings of the divine life, is a life of success. No matter how you have failed in life, hear me, I want you to believe that you can come back alive. Are you hearing me? Say, I refuse to fear. Say it, I refuse to fear. See, there is a, there is an, let me, let me use this slang, there is an, I don't send mentality, you have to give life and give people if you want to make it. Some of us are too careful. What will, what will Zuera say now? What will mom, we are too careful. That, that, that excessive care is not, is not fear unto faith, it's care unto doubt and it will kill you. There are people today who have refused to learn how to drive because of fear. What if I capsize in a gutter? You have refused to learn. There are others who have refused to learn how to do a lot of things. God gave you opportunity to learn so many things. There's tailoring now, professional tailoring. Somebody from UK just came and said, I want to train you. I said, Guy, me, please. I don't want any insult. I've seen the way they insulted my madam. I, I, I don't want headache. You are ready to fail. If you think like that, you are going to fail. In the name of Jesus, I release upon you the spirit of courage. Courage. You have to face life with courage. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Stop giving excuses. And tell yourself, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. It is a risk to do everything in life. The only guarantee you have is the word of God. Get up and in the name of Jesus, take steps. Refuse to fear. Koinone, I'm preaching to you. Refuse to fear. Refuse to fear. Refuse it. I know you carried over the course. Go back again with courage. Fear has kept a lot of people down. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage. To pray for a sick person, fear. You're already stretching your hands. You are looking and say, ah, I'm only in welfare department. Well, let me not disgrace myself here. Fear. Lastly, one of the biggest reasons why many people become failures. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact. Ignorance of kingdom principles. Ignorance. This is, in my opinion, the biggest reason. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written. You cannot observe what you do not know. He said, then, not before, not during, then shalt thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have not any kind of success, good success. Ignorance. Look at me. I know we know that by now in Koinonia, that there are laws in the kingdom. Prosperity is not magic. It's not a wish. 
there are kingdom principles a life of influence you want to be a career of the glory and the power of god is not a wish there are pathways to it you want to carry honor upon your life you can be blessed it doesn't mean you are honorable it says and jabez was more honorable honor is a law in the spirit there is what brings honor you can be rich and not have honor you can be anointed and not have honor when honor comes on your life everybody knows that there is honor upon your life hallelujah longevity has a principle longevity influence has a principle and he said in matthew chapter 13 now i think verse 11 or so if i'm not mistaken he said it has been given unto you say it has been given unto me one more time it has been given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom everybody say the mysteries of the kingdom it is on the strength of those mysteries that you will enjoy dominion it is on the strength of those mysteries that you will do great and mighty things in life nobody will just come and bless you for nothing when during our series the mysteries of the kingdom i teach on the law of exchange and i told you nothing goes for nothing nothing goes for nothing there is an exchange that must happen hallelujah very important these are some of the reasons why people become failures in life and part of this is working in our lives one or two or more or for some of us even all of them we are going to challenge challenge the gates of failure and say in this season of the rain I'm breaking out no way I won't remain like that I won't park where my father parked and become a failure he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city of above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of Papa. He leads me. Rise up on your feet. And let's begin to pray. Bless the Lord for this word tonight. These are preparatory teachings for the series that is coming. I need to prepare us. I don't want to just waste the revelations that God has given me. Go ahead and prophesy. Lord, you are leading me. Day by day, I keep rising. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying, pick up your notebook. You are going to read all those first prayer point, the five areas that you must focus on your spiritual life, financial life, family life, career life, relationship. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy on them one by one and say, Lord, I must excel in every one of these areas. Go ahead and pray. I excel in my spiritual life. I'm moving from one level of the anointing to another. One level of grace to the other. My relationship with Jesus is becoming stronger and stronger. 
I'm on fire for God. I'm on fire. No lukewarmness in my life. No lukewarmness in my life. No religion in my life. Come on, pray. I'm on fire for God. Burning. Burning for the kingdom. Pray for your finances. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be a beggar. I make up my mind that I am a blessing. I am a blessing, not a liability. I am a blessing. I reject poverty. I cause that spirit in my life. Pray. My home is a place of love, a place of blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm an exceptional father, an exceptional husband, an exceptional leader. Pray, an exceptional priest.
sing, you reign. Elohim. When we sing that song, let me tell you something. The kind of deliverance, deliverance is not fighting demons, no. An establishment of the victory of Christ experientially upon your life. Are we together? And there will be a massive, massive turnaround. In a way that will surprise you. Go ahead. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. I want you to really be angry tonight and insist that something must break open in your life. At the count of three, you will arise tonight as the God of Jeshua. The one that arrives, he rides upon the wings of the sea. Listen, as you shout that name, it's not a ritual. All I see in this room now is just fire. And I know that the Lord is going to descend with a shout like the warrior that he is. Are we together now? Whether you are in the main auditorium, overflow one, two, three, four by the road, following online. I want you with the simplicity of your childlike faith to shout that name Jesus and that fire will come upon you or just must have your mouth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic battle and I decree and declare it's time to challenge and confront the gates of darkness. It's time for the sons of Jacob to possess their possessions. It's time for families to understand. Therefore, Lord, as we lift up this shout to hear in the spirit, I pray in the name of Jesus that every power and every source responsible for the retrogression in anyone's life and destiny, it's time for it to be true. Are you ready now? One, two, three. I command that spirit. I command that devil. Bring them out. Shako Sato Shabarikata. That shout. I dismantle gates. I cause yokes and ordinances. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring them out quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm 
to see the spirit of delay. This delay is a wicked spirit. It can tie a life and can tie a destiny. Lift your hands. I see that fire locating a group of people. Lord, at the count of three, anyone here under the influence of delay, any family here at the count of three, may that spirit leave you. One, two, three. I just delay now. I just delay now. I just delay now. Shakot the second take the For your shame you shall receive double. The Lord is ministering very powerfully. I'm still praying over delay. Listen very carefully. I'm still praying over delay. Many of you do not even know that currently is delay in your ministry, in your life. Any dimension you should have entered but have not entered is delay. I say it again. I stretch my hands by this anointing. In the name of Jesus, let the fire that will end the lake fall upon you now. Let the fire that will end the lake fall upon you now. Let the fire that will end the lake fall upon you now. says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest i want to pray i don't know what keys results from our lives there are many well-meaning believers there are many well-meaning individuals you have hands but you can't eat you there is a song we used to sing growing up. It says some have food but cannot eat. Some can eat but have no food. This, this is the category I want to address now. You have capacity but no results. Gifted but not rewarded. Gifted but not blessed. Anointed. But no one is placing a demand on your grace. Shalakatos. Shalakatos. Ma shalakatos kete kete ke shede keta. Ente rokas kobara ha shede kete balakata. Shkabarato zanda takato shadia. E preke to shata. Makatos kabarakatos. Ente sekete zeketa. Japaru kasabaya kata. Ente koto shadakata. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Whatever has hindered your productivity, may the fire of the Holy Ghost separate you and that spirit now. Separate you and that spirit now. There's a category of people God is ministering to me right now. Just, just walk with me. You always do the wrong things. There is a spirit that makes you do the wrong things. The wrong business, the wrong relationship, the wrong friends. You don't know why everything in your life, when there is trouble, that's when you come. Anything good happening, you will go away from it to evil. He says, he says, the Lord's prayer, lead us not into temptation. That means a man can be led into temptation. And he said, deliver us from evil. Lead us not. A businessman can be led into destruction, led into temptation. A precious anointed lady with a great destiny can be led into temptation. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Listen, one of the most treasured 
gift that you must covet in your life is the ability to hear God clearly. The times we live in now, guess what will punish you again and again? He said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Here's how I quote it. If the Lord is my shepherd, then I shall not want. When you are, many of us hear demons clearly. You hear spirits clearly. You hear voices, nonsense voices clearly. You don't need to pray to hear them. But do you know that many of us now, even our dreams have been hijacked and manipulated. You don't even know whether it's God speaking now or not. They come as an appearance of light, but the message is not consistent with the integrity of God. So you don't even know what to believe again. Dreams are prophetic avenues for the speakings of God to reach the saints. But they can be hijacked and manipulated by the powers that be. A lady can be manipulated to reject her husband. A gentleman can be manipulated to reject his wife. A person can be manipulated to reject his voice. He is job. There are many people, they got jobs. A spirit told them leave. They thought it was God and they left it. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a vision. Be sensitive. Something will happen here now. And I'm seeing people in the realm of the spirit, but I'm not seeing ears. Imagine like a man, no ears. This is what I'm seeing. Now I understand by this vision what the Bible says, he that hath an ear. Physically, we are supposed to have ears. But right now in the name of Jesus, this is not for everybody. Hold on. I'm praying right now. There is a grace that will open the hearing of people. I stretch my hands. Lord, where are they? The men and women that need to hear you in this season for ministry to move forward. I stretch my hands, representing the hands of God, and I command the hearing ears, be open now. Papa Lukatosiata. Please help them, be open now. Be open now. For business, be open now. For ministry, be open now. For your career, be open now. hallelujah and isaac sowed in that land he sowed in a specific there is a geography to increase it doesn't just happen everywhere there are people today if the devil wants to destroy them he will give them visa to uk they will think his breakthrough not every open door is anointed there are times the devil destroys you by opening doors it's not always closed doors there are open doors that, that are open doors towards doom. He said, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Mm. Thou shalt show me the path of life. He said, for it is in your light that we see light. We're going to cry for divine direction. Many destinies are tied down now because of divine direction or lack of it. Lord, what is the next phase of my life? You can't remain like this and just sit down. What is the next season? What is your blueprint? Lift your voice and pray. Show me, oh God. I buy into the mind of the Spirit. What is your communication for my ministry, for my life in this season? I don't want to be found where you were. I want to be found where you are. that have an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying not what he said what he's saying what he's saying what he's saying he said the spirit speaketh expressly not the spirit spoke the spirit speaketh expressly direction okay. listen listen let me talk to us a little especially i know that a generation of young people were very proud we just believe that just because we went to school we can determine the course of our lives with intelligence now destiny 
it's not just academics and education you must cry part time per second for revelation this ministry by the grace of god we are where we are because not just because of the ability to hear god but the ability to stay until he says move tiredness can tell you to move weariness can tell you to move he said if your presence goeth not with us don't send us from here oh god we are not going do you know it is costly to go without god is cheaper the pain of your waiting is cheaper than the pain of knowing that you are where god is not there are men of god that started well but people encourage you and say this is how they do it in ministry when you get to this level this is the next step and you foolishly took a step a step that ate away your destiny and your progress and your blessing hallelujah it matters that we understand times and seasons and that we can wait until God says move I remember after our second crusade in this ministry the next year we we're discussing and they say where are we going I went to the Lord and the Lord said you are not going anywhere and I said okay we're not going anywhere ah, but I thought we do it every year mm -mm. be careful the ritual of religion can destroy you God used to do it this way it doesn't mean he has to do it the same way the most important thing is let it be him doing it treasure of my heart and of my soul in my weakness you are merciful mm. redeemer of my past and present wrong you're the holder of my future days to come nothing in this world says jesus you're the cup that won't run dry we live our lives being in a hurry is not the same thing as speed God is a God of speed. I don't know why I'm preaching this now. This is part of the miracle service. God is the God of speed, but God is not the God of rush. There is a difference between speed and rush. Many of us, the spirit of God is speaking to someone here. You need to calm down. The way you are running with your life, you are going to land in trouble. The way you are running with ministry, you will land in trouble. The way you are approaching marriage, the way you are approaching destiny, you will land in trouble. Culture and the sociological um, context of our living can mount pressure on us to run ourselves to the ditch. My soul wait thou upon the Lord. God is a God of speed. But until he speaks, you are on your own. It's amazing how you can be running for many years and find out that you are not moving. Running but not moving. And here comes a man, as weak as he is, but he can walk at the pace of God. And more can be achieved in one month with God than 10 years alone. Have you not learned the excellency of walking with God? He said, for with God, all things without god outside of god there are things that are not possible apostle my life i don't want to be a failure age is already um, not on my side i must make sure that i build a house now i must and god is saying calm down son you have handed your life over to me let me be lord of your life i say lord you don't know the pressure that is coming from my family let's be careful satan comes to attack us at the points of our vulnerability and hijacks us don't miss the series on Friday we're rounding up the deliverance series are we together God is already speaking that's what leads many of us to this life of hustling putting your hand in everything and just rushing around and they say why say man must work all those nonsense cliches must get out of your life and your mind if God does not lead me I'm not going nowhere you may call me irresponsible, but let me die waiting. My soul waits down upon the Lord. 
it's now a foreign experience to many of us to wait gone are the days that people will say i'm i'm waiting now, people just think waiting is fasting from six to six waiting means waiting The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. Listen very carefully. It says, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. Man of God, listen, businessman. It says, it says the watchman watched but in vain. And my Bible says, it is vain to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. Only to eat the bread of sorrow. I'm speaking to someone be tired of the bread of sorrow the bread of sorrow does not feel the bible says he gives his beloved sleep there are many pastors that just get up and feel anointed and just want to rent one small auditorium and punish themselves punish their wives punish the few people that believe in them because they think ministry is just about opening a place and then we have the gods to tell people come it's not that way Paul, a man approved of God. Jesus, a man approved of God. Is God speaking to us? We need to have results in our lives. We are still praying. But you see, God is not a herbalist. No. There are systems. There is a way that he works. And one of the ways that he works is to direct men and thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it walk ye in it and you will find rest for your souls are you are you hearing what i'm saying now it matters god is interjecting this miracle service to just minister to someone and say you are you are hurrying up too much you think it's breakthrough you are running you will soon find out that you've been around the same jungle for someone after this service you need to go and calm down with your life and say i've been running since 2005 what have i done with my life absolutely nothing oh come lord jesus come and direct me give me direction are we together the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong not even bread for them that are wise when a man subscribe to the direction of god your life may look controversial for a while but all that will be before you is beauty and glory then your life will become beulah and hepzibah the delight of the nations the excellency of waiting the hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait it's easy to rush it's easy to do a lot of things you will make more mistakes in your life rushing there is power in waiting are we together there is power in waiting we're going to pray for the sick now there's a lot to do tonight but listen very carefully if this message is for you then i want you to receive it from the depth of your heart you know when we come like this there are various things that the lord is doing to several people not everyone is sick not everyone is oppressed but a word can come and god says be careful there are people about to relocate now to regions they have not sought god they just assumed let me tell you something brothers and sisters there is no place on earth called greener pastures Greener pastures is a spiritual location. It's where the voice of God for you is. God is already helping someone. How many Nigerians smuggle their way through the desert trying to get to lands because they believe? The only difference between your locality and any locality in the world is a greater propensity to discern, appreciate, and reward value. That's all. They have a greater propensity to discern, to appreciate, and to reward value. You can be where you are if you are truly directed by God. And He will come to you and bless you. Are we together now? How many of you are trusting the Lord to touch you or touch your loved ones? We are going to do it very fast because the second session of this prayer, I want to settle down 
and really really pray seriously and just dismantle a number of things in our lives the grand finale will be on friday but then you are here we're going to pray for the sick now i promise that we'll do that very early so that we can finish and then attend to other issues now you may not be sick listen carefully but if you are a man of god is an opportunity to watch lord what are you doing how does this thing work what can i learn you must remain a student we are all students in the school of the spirit ever learning but in this case in that learning coming to the knowledge of the truth are we together you are trusting god for a healing miracle if you are in overflow one now hold on i want to specifically minister to barren people myself so if you have any case of barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three please i want to minister to you myself please make your way very quickly and come stand you're trusting god for a miracle let's do it very very fast there is a lot to do very fast the worship team will lead us and just charge the atmosphere for us while we do this very fast and then at the same time to save time at the same time your your requests your prayer requests if you are here and you're you're yet to write your prayer request go ahead you can spare a few minutes to just write it now please listen listen very carefully except whoever is laying hands on you maybe ask you or prophesies to you or does whatever you just once they touch you just go back to your seat some of you i notice they touch you and you move to the other side of the line and still stand it's unbelief praise the lord or you are saying okay you don't know my problem is here and you are touching here the lord is showing me something about this woman you don't have fallopian tubes at all oh my god they've removed it Your husband got another wife. <sighs> Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? and sisters let me tell you something i'm not trying to embarrass this precious lady i don't know you i'm just seeing you for the first time i'm not a woman so i can't pretend to say i know what is happening here but for a woman to not have fallopian tubes all removed and now it has scattered your marriage let me ask you a question and i'm asking it boldly do you believe that god can give you new fallopian tubes Where are you coming from? Madam, let me tell you, there is a God that sits in heaven. God is not a herbalist. He's a miracle worker. Put your hand on your stomach. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus. Father, that's all right. I decree and declare brand new fallopian tubes. The God that doeth wonders. Brand new fallopian tubes. I say it again. Brand new fallopian tubes. Madam, allow for some time and go and check yourself in the hospital. Give Jesus praise. Please help this woman. It's an elderly woman. Help her, help her. social her. In the name of Jesus, Mama God is delivering you in Jesus' name. The Lord is showing you somebody. Just, just hold on. You, you will sing, you will go back to your singing. I just want to. I'm saying that someone, the power of God is going to come upon you here. You are here right now on the line. I want to prophesy to that person. I, I just saw a flash of light, a very strong anointing. Bring the person. 
the Lord is rolling away the reproach in your life and the Lord is telling me he's breaking the power of witchcraft over your life in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder therefore in the name of Jesus I declare to you not only will you or your brother be healed I decree and declare salvation comes to your family now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ please sing for us that song creator of the universe creator of the universe spirit and I'm seeing fibroid is that true how long seven years fibroid confirmed in the hospital that devil is going to leave you now 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you have children, ma? I've not married. You are not married? Oh my God. Now you be God, Almighty God.
say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I prophesy over the next half of this year. Hear the word of the Lord. Become for me seasons of signs and wonders. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Everyone. Make sure you are praying. Let's keep praying, keep praying. 
Let it become for me seasons of signs and wonders. Seasons of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please let's be serious. Say in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of the anointing. Required for my next level of exploits. I receive it tonight in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and please pray. Every dimension. lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen that's the next prayer point we prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen to you the years that the canker worm the caterpillar and even the palmer worm has taken say in the name of Jesus say it again in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare that everything that has left my life and destiny that should not have left I call you back by prophecy. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. Declare that you might just be justified. Declare.
the name of Jesus Christ. Say it again in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare over my loved ones. Hear the word of the Lord. This is your season of rising. Lift your voice and prophesy over your loved ones. Please believe what you are saying. Prophesy. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. This is your season of rising. A new level, a new dimension in the spirit. says the Egyptians you see today he said you will see them for no more forever I like you in the next five minutes everything that has attempted to mock God in your life don't be afraid open your mouth and declare that under this atmosphere of the anointing of the spirit you are leaving my life and my family forever open your mouth and pray declares thou that ye might as be justified pray don't entertain unbelief I cause poverty. I cause failure. Pray. Jesus cause the victory. Jesus say it again in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that my help comes from above I decree and declare that my help comes from the Lord and in this season I prophesy to my destiny a believer receive the help of God lift your voice and pray call for help
Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this. We are still praying. Many of us here, all you need is the ministry of helpers. Are we together now? The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. Do you know why he spoke about the hills? Because God used the strategy of the hill to protect the people. Every time there was war, he would lead them up the hill. And if they got there, there would always be victory. Remember Elijah. When, it, when there was time for any contest, he would say, go up the hill. Mount Carmel, Mount Zion, Mount this and that. And so he said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. But he said, no, no, no. Where comments my help? He said, my help, the, the hill is only a strategy. The hill is not my source. And then he says, my help cometh. That means just like faith, help too cometh. Faith cometh. Help cometh. Your help can come from other places. By divination and witchcraft, a man can attract a system of attention. But he will pay for it. Listen. Ebenezer is a revelation of the hand of God that can help a man. Blessed is a man that finds help from God. Many people are suffering because there is no help. Life can be cheap when there is help. Believe me when I tell you this. How much is the rent that the God of heaven cannot pay it? How much is it? What is the job issue? With a single signature, a man's life can change. But I told you every man who helps you has relatives who are in need. It takes a grace and anointing. To compel them to leave those who they are connected by blood and come to help you this world is too wicked for any kind of kindness to happen by default i'd like you to cry father in this season i'm ready to receive of the ministry of destiny help us please open your mouth and cry be serious some of you are looking at me pray pray name of Jesus we are still praying this prayer session is a very major part of tonight's miracle service and I want you to pray because people are receiving results we are still going to pray over the issue of help let me tell you the truth brothers and sisters you see this ministry by the grace of God is a product of the help of God my life as a person is a product of the help of God it is vain my Bible says to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he said for he giveth his beloved sleep there are men of God that need help there are anointed people that need help there are intelligent graduates that need help there are married men and women that need help 
the holy spirit is called a helper the mercy of god can create a platform for help i've taught you this we are going to pray if you don't pray it will not happen i want you to be tired of your current level financially you all in god can step in and you have value you are package your value but there is no system of placing a demand you must cry to the heavens lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart prophesy to the north prophesy to the south prophesy to the east prophesy to the west where is the raven that came and fed elijah at butchery my god arise for me as a helper Shaka barakatos, shaka taka 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 ta, raka taka katos, shake te break te 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 le ba kata ta. Shama sonda barakatos ya taka ta. Help for my family, oh God. We cry for your help. Pray for your business. Arise, oh God, as a helper. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. Then we were like them that dream, and then said they among the hidden, the Lord hath done great things for us. He said the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again the captivity of Zion, like the streams of the Negev. Lift your voice and labor in the place of prayer. Shabakata kate bashana malakata, skata plata tose temegetea. Everything that is alive grows. I provoke growth in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying over the issue of help. Listen, you are going to pray for your loved ones. I know this about Africa. If you rise alone, you will not remain there. <clears throat> In Africa, as you rise, you pray for your loved ones to rise too. If you are the only successful person out of 15 people, they will stretch you and drain you. If Joseph and his brothers were also equally successful they will not persecute him but he was one out of many i saw the sun the moon and 11 stars bowing to one person and the brother said no way and they walked him out my bible says that a man's enemies shall be the members of his own household sometimes it's not binding and casting lord show them mercy too so that as i'm rejoicing they will rejoice and leave me in peace are you ready to pray say in the name of Jesus I provoke divine help over my loved ones I prophesy to them that in this season receive the help of the Lord lift your voice and pray for your loved ones financial help spiritual help career help help oh god help oh god hallelujah Ezekiel 37 and he took me in the spirit of the Lord and he took me to a valley and the Bible says that valley was full of bones and it says the bones were very dry bones don't dry up in one day it means they have been there for a long time we want to visit age-long situations that have refused to go you were born and you met that problem you have become an adult you have met that no 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 it must go that it has stayed long does not mean it's valid say in the name of jesus every dry bone in my life and in my family hear the word of the lord i decree and declare let life come to you now lift your voice and pray prophesy life your father lost his job since 1991 till today he has not gotten a job hear the word of the lord 
hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Oh ministry, hear the word of the Lord. Oh business, hear the word of the Lord. Oh destiny, hear ye the word of the Lord. The Bible declares that where the word of the king is, there is power. Hallelujah. And he said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, Son of man, prophesy to these bones. And say, O bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of that, he said, And as I prophesied, as I was commanded, there was a sound. And then a shaking. Notice that the bones began to look for themselves. Meaning they have the ability to restructure themselves. Kabbalah Kota Shikata. And then the bones were there, but there was no life. He says, Son of man, prophesy again to the four winds and say, O wind, breathe upon the slain. And the wind came and breathed upon the bones, and there arose an exceeding great army. Listen, God is able, God is able to turn a man's captivity overnight. He said, Have you ever heard that a city gives birth in one day? But he said, as soon as Zion travails, we know that birth is nine months. But something can happen to the rod of Aaron and it can bud overnight with no root. I like you to say, Lord, let the supernatural work in my life in this season. Business at a supernatural rate. Ministry at a supernatural rate. If it is the Lord's doing, then it must be marvelous in my eyes. Lift your voice and pray. As soon as Zion travails, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. As soon as Zion travails, pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The apostle said, I desired once again to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Your breakthrough desired to come to you, but Satan hindered it. Your helpers desire to come to you. <sighs> Have you seen a situation, Jimmy, where someone is about to bless you, but before you reach your helper, your enemy got there before you and told them something that turned their minds against you. He said the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity. Please, I'd like you to be angry in your spirit and pray. We're not here to waste time. Brothers and sisters, this is how victory is legislated and established in the kingdom. Are we together? He says, do not be ignorant of the devices, the methodologies from the word stratomai, the methodology of Satan. There are methods. He said, do not let your good be evil spoken of. Have you seen that that's a method? That I call you and Satan makes me interpret it as sarcasm. I just call you to say, how are you? And he says, so you are mocking me. It's, it's important that your good is interpreted as good. Jesus went to a city and they didn't receive him. Do you think they just didn't please carry your healing rubbish and go? How many men of God were sent by God to families to help them? But the devil changed their perception over that grace. Say, no, 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 no. Anything pastor, they are all riffraffs, they are beggars, they are liars, they are hungry people. They just want my money. It's a strategy. Someone wants to teach you something and help you. Say, no, this, this guy, don't, no, 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 no. I desired once again to come to you, but Satan hindered us. How many people today would have been helped by God? Are we together now? You heard that they are applying jobs. 
but the devil made you feel that just because there are people scamming people everywhere the job that was your own was a scam too and you sat down and said no way and today you are still employed we need to cry to God to help us know what is of God and what is not of God because many times they look the same is the spirit of discernment that will help you five people may be cheating you but the sixth person may be genuine and you can't you join anybody that comes and then you remain poor and broke forever there are families today you never talk about anything good sir they gave us a prayer no 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 that's how that useless prophet came and prophesied and collected my hundred thousand don't bring any man of god here whereas the person who god was sending was like elijah to the widow of zarephath the fact that there is evil does not mean the grace of god is insufficient please listen to me there are people today who have been ordained to be blessed to listen but satan has clouded their minds so that they are cynical about everything that is God. Are we together? I remember a few years ago, I went to a house to pray for them. I was invited and I got to the house. I usually don't go to people's houses to pray for them. And I went to the house and uh, um, I just saw the man, the, the owner of the house, the sarcasm and the look that he was looking at me here they come these hungry young men again i tried to greet him i even held wine for them so that there's no suspicion and that man from what i saw didn't have up to two months to live and i sat down i was talking with the family and the man was just looking you know you know all this do do and leave my house until by the mercies of God, God began to speak to him. At the end of it, it was him that escorted me out. He said, ah, ah, you are, you are, you know, my friend, I collected my, I said, look at this man would have missed this miracle. Brothers and sisters, some of our loved ones, you know what I'm saying, are like that. Their blessings kept passing for the last 10 years. They organized a program near your house. And they say, no, 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 no. Once it is not you, it is not God. It's an error. What of business opportunities? Just because people have been scammed here, just because something came out and something happened, they be anything business, God forbid, don't even mention anything. Oh, sorry, dear son. No, 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 no. Don't talk to me. And then you remain poor and broke and say, God, what is wrong? He told Joshua, be strong and of good courage. In life, it takes audacity to know when your opportunity comes. 28 of Genesis, God came to Jacob and Jacob, out of his fear and cynicism, was not ready for that visitation. The next verses would lead him to the house of Laban where he learned by his pain. By chapter 32, he was ready. The Bible says when God came again, he held him. He said, whether you are not God, I will shall hold you. It's in your holding, I will find out. I won't let you go till you bless me. He said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and you have prevailed. And he touched his tie and blessed him. And the Bible says, then the sun arose and he called the name of the place Peniel. For he had met with God face to face. I have seen God face to face and my life arose. And the Bible says, then the sun arose. Because it is the breaking of the day that comes with joy. For as long as it is night, weeping endures. Are we together? I want us to maximize these meetings let's not just come before god and fulfill the ritual and then share the grace and go back it's time for us to move the bible says how forcible are right words you are hearing something that is waking you up and challenging you are we together i know i took i think i took i don't know if it was a whole month or so to pray for destiny help us Hey, Jimmy, your life is stranded until a helper comes. I know this. There was a man who was so crippled he could not walk. And Jesus came to town. He heard about it but could not get there. But certain people came. Your helpers will insist till you are blessed. Listen, a helper is not a well-wisher. A well-wisher is just a sociological being with a sense of empathy. A helper is sent and ordained. His ministry continues till you rise. 
some men came to david in a cave called adulam and they vowed that we must make you king you are seeing a man who is already weak no result ah when your helpers come to you it will look like a charm there will be no reason for them to remain they will call you have you gotten the job sir no sir ah after okay i'm going to abuja for you and you start saying i hope there's no string attached no 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 i only saw myself helping you in a dream are we together every destiny helper has those in need please hear me graduates hear me oh every space for a job has hundreds of thousands of others connected but when god decides to help you he said jacob have i loved jacob have i loved hallelujah jacob have i loved God changes the rules as if it's unfair to you. Haba, there is such a dimension, the helper of Israel. When you labor and labor and labor and labor, you'll be lying to say you are giving God glory. There are many testimonies that are just a product of carnality. The way you suffered for that miracle is why you cannot give it when God places a demand. Greed has an explanation. When you, when you acquire by labor and suffering and hardship, you can't give. But if it's freely you received, it freely you will give. Are we together? Your destiny is one helper away. By the privilege of God's grace, I've been privileged to be a destiny helper to many people. And overnight, they got jobs without interview. Just because I happen to know someone in a position of influence. And I say, sir, please, there is someone, can you help me? I say, apostle, if it's you, that's it. The same way someone too has spoken, it's the help of God. We rise by his help. Your business will open up by his help. Everything you have is needed on earth. But it takes God to connect you to a man who is unashamed about his need for your grace. It is the help of God that brought us here, brothers and sisters. The help of God. There are pastors that need the help of God. You can blow balloon and put it around. You can do everything and find out that the people come and say, it's cold. Don't we take tea in this church and be sarcastic towards you. Yet somebody called by God to help you will stand in the rain and say i'm sent and i'm not going anywhere when last did you receive help in your life when last did you receive help please hear what i'm telling you do you know if you do things alone and by yourself you are not blessed even if you succeed in doing it help help that god arises for a man and say young men established within 10 years but i have chosen promise that in one month i would do i will walk a walk in your life that if it were told you you would not believe hallelujah a few weeks ago someone called me he was he was he's planning on getting married and he went and collected the list just two or three weeks ago and the list was quite voluminous and it's challenging and he called me that he's trying to seek advice whether it's the will of god or not i told him i said no that that is a foolish that is a foolish concern are you seeing the, you labored with a lady to go and meet her parents just because of the enormity of the list you are now seeking whether it's the will of god going behind what is there to ask whether it's the will of god or not listen I know that it looks like it's just a joke, but it's a serious issue. How many people have gotten high blood pressure because there is no help? No help. Ask the medical doctors, they will tell you. You buy a car alone. You look for food alone. You walk alone. You seek counsel by yourself. You advise yourself. No helper. You see people moving like Cain all around nobody to help nobody to advise you their pastor pastor bology do you know sometimes pastor bology would call me 
and say man of god how is everything happening i hope here in the north there's nothing you know this and that you're fine everything and i say oh pastor you're a busy man why do you have to do this and he said we need to encourage ourselves and i said my god help 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 are you ready for god to really help you our message is by the grace of god are being spread on eagle's wings is by the spirit but is through the help of men 70 percent of the invitations where i go to somebody stands maybe in a church council to say bring this man of god i know see all these people from the north no 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 i know this one who knows you enough to speak for you at the gates because there are times you are not permitted to enter the chambers where your value is needed but it will take mordecai uh, mordecai mordecai is outside but mordecai needs to find favor with the king but it would take god using someone inside joseph is in the prison but destined for the throne a wine presser needs to split your case before the king one more time father listen listen whoever must rise up and be an instrument to shift me to the next level please send them to send them my way i want i i cry that you pray with all your heart men can be helped of god my help cometh from the lord they were many widows in zarafat they all needed help but to none was elijah sent except a widow in zarafat how about the rest there were many widows also needing help but god chooses to send a prophet to just one of them hallelujah the last prayer point and then we'll pray here the bible says according as his divine power please listen hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness to life i will never be the man of god who will teach you to live a defeated life at the expense of your spiritual growth no no there are matters that pertain to life there are matters that pertain to godliness his divine power covers them all so i can excel in the matters that pertain unto godliness and still excel in the matters that pertain unto life i should not serve god and tell my children to go and beg a neighbor for food he says since i was young now i am old i have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread you know many believers in their carnality and the depravity of wisdom they think that when you begin to focus about the matters of life it's a sign that you are becoming less spiritual i can tell you from experience that the pain that comes from the issues of life can make you ungodly are we together the ladies that go into prostitution do they go into prostitution with poor men the young men that join occult all these cult groups vibrant young people and the next thing you see they are in a devilish cult somewhere it's easy for us to criticize them but you will be surprised that it's from that occult they are feeding their families compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity as a man of god i must be compassionate enough about your situation thank god for your spiritual life but i want you to do well that's what success means are we together i have food in my house right now but do you have food only a wicked man of god will enjoy and rise at the expense of the rising of others a true shepherd lays down his life doesn't climb on the ship some of you sow into my life i must teach you how others will also sow into your life it can't be all about me you are bringing seeds you are blessing me and i'm seeing the benefit of it to my spiritual life but how about you i came with a passion tonight if one person rises in a ministry alone is that a blessing no he called many sons to glory not a few 
there are many of you with business ideas there are many of you with ministries there are many of you desperately waiting for a job and men are beginning to say where is your god you are no longer young you have been praying and fasting and doing all of this if you cannot bring fruits that befit your work with god we will stop you from coming for koinonia or we will stop you from doing this and god wants to arise and prove himself mighty why won't you pray well when you eat well why won't you pray well when you the receipt of your children's school fees is being paid for i have the privilege by the mercies of god to support many families here and sometimes I, my eyes are full of tears after a powerful meeting and i see someone standing and say sir my children once upon a time two dear ladies here for five years a jimmy just to buy jam form beautiful wonderful godly ladies and that's exactly what satan wants after the prayer after falling under the anointing you get up and your needs remain and you sit in the night and say look can't i do something the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity many of us have dipped our hands in iniquity simply because of the hunger that is in your belly was it not hunger that took israel to egypt talk to me was it prosperity that took them there no there was hunger in the land and israel had to go to egypt to look for food they went to Egypt and stayed until they became slaves. When they began to say it's time for our exodus, Pharaoh looked at them and said, Aha, uh -huh, you are beginning to find some level of convenience. Don't give them straw. It's because you are giving them straw that they have the time to even call upon the name of the Lord. Leave them to find straw by themselves. And they say, Moses, don't go to Pharaoh again every time you want to rise it's like a it's like a thermometer the devil tries to make sure that there is a harsh climate economically and otherwise i stand to tell you you can be of influence you can be prosperous and you can be spiritual jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men the lamb's wife is a balanced woman he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city that was equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth any doctrine that does not preach that balance is not presenting the lamb's wife you are showing something else the lamb's wife is a balanced city the church of god must arise and help believers to do well in life this you see a lot of people prayer warriors torn trouser torn destiny you just see them move around you now go to say i want to marry you and the girl's father says, if i ever see you near the corridor of my house he say but i praise i say so what we keep mocking the name of the lord there are many people do you know that the times that i've had counseling people a major reason why people backslide and leave god is that they get to a level in life now where the matters of life stand glaring before them and they are surprised that as spiritual as they are now the church started as a prayer meeting and you were doing well healing the sick now suddenly you have gotten to a size where you need rent and you just realize that per use is hundred thousand your prayer life just starts going down slowly all of a sudden you find out that your wife is pregnant and they say just bring something just to test and make sure she's fine say i don't have anything say well the god that we serve is a victorious god are we together many of you have the hearts to support the kingdom but the means is not there listen to me listen to me for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave in life i give you a guarantee for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave the anointing comes upon you but alongside the anointing is capacity for influence it took a man of influence called joseph of arimathea to get jesus from the cross it was not a prayer warrior that brought jesus from the cross a prayer warrior supervised his birth but a wealthy man supervised his resurrection we're a ministry of prayer we're a ministry that fasts we're a ministry of the word but we must be a ministry with results that are all around 
and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed him in all things not some things the last prayer point like Naaman you may be the captain of a great army the Bible says he conquered valiantly but he was crippled the one or two areas in your life I'm giving you a personal time of supplication now one or two areas in your life that must balance this equation to present Christ well let's cry together and say God you have done well in this area and I thank you but Lord I cry that in this area may your glory be represented in my life please lift your voice and pray please pray in my life keep praying be glorified be glorified cry to the lord your hands over the prayer requests and let's begin to pray this is a representation of our pain it's a representation of our needs just cry to the Lord from the dead that Lord every request here before you upon this altar I ask my God and my King the one who heareth them that call upon you arise in your majesty and turn these requests into testimonies it is unto you that answers prayer that we have come and Lord in the name that is above all names we provoke your integrity over these issues 
Lord, there are issues here that only God can solve. Some of the issues represented here are life and death issues. We will search for you and we will find you. We will find you with all our hearts. We will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship with all my heart Lord I will search for you and I will find you I will find you with all my heart and I will lift my voice to you in worship I will worship You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. over this request in the name of the Lord God of heaven like he has done it before may every request here before God be turned now into supernatural testimonies may God turn every situation here to supernatural testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ just give me two three minutes and we're done I want to speak over your life now when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you Both all names, I decree and declare over your life. Let a new dimension of testimonies come upon you in like a mighty rushing wind in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare everything that represents shame and reproach in your life. I cry to the God of heaven to roll it away like smoke before the wind. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for every man of God represented here. Fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every issue of concern in your career, in your business and in your life, I send the word of God like a messenger to reproduce the garden of Eden over your issue in the name of Jesus Christ when a man's ways pleases the Lord he make it even his enemy to be at peace with him I declare whoever must be at peace must be at peace with you to rise I command peace to happen between you Master, we have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at thy word. I want to prophesy to you. Where you failed before, go back again with an anointing. Amen. 
go back with the grace that makes men succeed. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord visited Sarah. And she called the name of her son Isaac. He said, all those who hear about this will laugh with me. I introduce you to a new season of laughter. 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 Turn again our captivities like the streams of the naked. I pray for you. It will be like a dream of the night. The way God will turn your life around. Anyone here under the plague of death, any family represented here that the devil has vowed that they will not see the end of the year together in joy. I decree, O oh death, where is thy sting? And O oh grave, where is thy victory? I command death to pass from over you in the name of Jesus. He said, let the people praise me and then the earth shall yield. Every ground can yield. I command your ground to produce for you. Daniel chapter 2 and when you read from verse 28 downwards it said but there is a God that revealed secrets I pray for you the secret the mystery that you need to hold on to in this season that will shift you to a new level the kingdom truth the revelation of the spirit because the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the truth you need to lay your hands upon may my God open your eyes to see it and the Bible says that you shall be called all nations shall call you blessed and you shall be called a delightsome land it's called Beulah and Hephzibah a land that is desirable and Isaac looked at his sons and said the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed I decree and declare may the fragrance of heaven that calls for favor to men may it come upon your life now in the name of Jesus Christ it says thou causes men to ride over our heads we walk through fire and through water but thou brought us into a wealthy place i decree and declare help even in the area of finances may it arise for you i say it again help even in the area of finances may it arise for you finally i pray for every family represented here and that includes those connecting with us online it doesn't matter what part of the world you are following from in the name that is above all names the lord has made a, declare, a declaration that this is our year of signs a sign and a wonder is a miracle with a message on it therefore i decree and declare may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders i say it again may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus wave your hands and give Jesus praise thank you Jesus hallelujah paradventure you are here in this place tonight everyone please listen please no moving around let's honor the name of the Lord you are here you have seen what the Lord has done You've heard me teach and the Holy Spirit began to convict you to tell you that the time had come for you to make Jesus Lord of your life and to take him seriously. I want to give you that opportunity right now. There are people here saying, Apostle, I've heard about God. I've been around the things of God. I've been around church. I have a Christian name. My father may even be a man of God. My mother is an intercessor. But I, I declare my need for God tonight. And then there are others here who are saying, Apostle, I have given my life to Christ. But at one point or the other, I just found my life going haywire. And I'm saying, I need Jesus. If you belong to any of these categories, I'd like you to make a bold step. Overflow 1, Overflow 2, the main auditorium, you can walk and come out here. And then Overflow 3, you can go 
in front of your projector stand if you are there please make your way quickly let's honor them as they come the holy spirit is convicting someone don't wait for someone to come be the first god bless you koinonia you appreciating them in the name of jesus christ there has to be someone making a decision for jesus god bless you god bless you keep clapping as they come win that war tonight win that war god bless you as you come it says he that cometh to him he will in no wise cast away make your way make your way to this front god bless you keep coming we have one minute for you if you're coming from outside please double up your steps very quickly very quickly say call for total surrender lord you gave me your life i'm giving you mine right now are there people still coming make your way very quickly apostle i'm not sure if i'm born again or not i've been around the things of god but i'm not exactly sure join them join them quickly when the titanic sank there were only two names those who were lost and those who were saved no in-betweens make your way quickly hallelujah i salute every one of you if you are joining them please join them very quickly overflow three you can move to the front of your projector those online giving their hearts to jesus just follow and pray along with us by faith in the name of jesus now i want you to lift your right hand sincerely you're not reciting a poem you are speaking to the lord and he's here listening to you say after me lord jesus say it again say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you shed your blood for me i believe that you were raised up for my justification tonight i hand over my life to you and i receive your life in return i declare that the power of sin the power of the flesh the power of satan is broken over my life i declare that i'm a child of god i am saved the grace to walk in victory to walk in liberty is mine now in jesus name keep your hands lifted jesus i present to you the ones you died for we thank you for bringing these ones out no man can come to the father except you draw them lord jesus i pray that the grace that keeps men in this kingdom let it be supplied your people right now in the name of jesus christ i declare over your life and i decree that you are going forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ every challenge you came here with as a result of this new life let new victories come for you in jesus name i pray a big congratulations to you thank you so much now i want you to follow someone waving his hands there's a gentleman waving his hands there can I see who is waving his hands now? Please, very quickly, I'd like you to follow him. All of you in concert, just follow the gentleman. There'll be a group of people to just meet with you very quickly and very briefly. Let's honor them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.